Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it here on the channel with many more like it's to come in the future, so subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate it. If you're a fan of obscure wrestling trivia and wrestling mysteries, then this is the place for you. Also drop a like and comment on this video, it only takes one second and makes a massive difference. Wrestling has crossed over into popular culture on a number of occasions, from the phenomenon of Hulkamania to The Rock becoming the number one box office actor in the world today. However, the untold story of Maurice Tillet may be the most interesting case of a wrestler making his mark on the world years after he would pass away. Our story begins on the 23rd of October 1903, when Maurice Tillet was born in the Ural Mountains of Russia. As a child, Tillet had a completely normal appearance and would be nicknamed the Angel due to his angelic face. In 1917, Tillet and his family would leave Russia and move to France. By 1920, Tillet began to notice swelling on his hands, feet and head, and was diagnosed with acromedaly, also known as giantism, which is a condition caused by a benign tumour on the pituitary gland. This is the same condition that the Big Show has. Tillet had originally wanted to become a lawyer, however, unfortunately he was unable to do so due to his condition, so he would instead join the French Navy, where he would serve for five years as an engineer. In 1937, Tillet met a professional wrestler called Carl Pagello, who convinced Tillet to get into the wrestling business. Throughout the late 1930s, Tillet wrestled around France as well as the UK until moving to America in 1940. Tillet then worked in Boston for promoter Paul Bowser, who gave Tillet the French Angel gimmick, pushing him to the main event. The French Angel would be booked as unstoppable and went on to hold the territory's world title for 19 consecutive months. The French Angel character would be so successful that other wrestlers with the same condition and appearance began to copy the gimmick, and would use it in different countries. There was the Polish Angel, the Canadian Angel, the Irish Angel, the Swedish Angel, and even the Super Swedish Angel. The Super Swedish Angel would even go on to become an actor starring in over 30 movies, becoming the most successful version of the gimmick, even more so than Tillet. By 1945, Tillet's health had declined and he would start to get booked lower down on the card until his retirement in 1953. Tillet would sadly pass away the following year in 1954, however, the French Angel's unique look will live on forever. In 2001, Shrek hit theatres and wrestling historians from around the globe would instantly recognise the character. As we can see here, the French Angel and Shrek are the spitting images of each other, from their short and stumpy bodies to the overgrown features on their faces. When the creators of Shrek were asked about the comparisons between the two, they refused to state whether Tillet was the inspiration for the character or not, but come on, the two are practically twins. Cartoon characters taking inspiration from real life people is nothing new. For example, Popeye was actually based on Frank Rocky Figel. Figel was a man from the Popeye creator's hometown of Chester, Illinois, and as you can see here, the similarities between the two are uncanny. Another example of this is Dennis the Menace, who was based upon the creator of the character's real-life son. And side note here, the story of Dennis the Menace will forever go down as one of the biggest coincidences in human history, as both the British and American versions of the character were created at the exact same time by two different creators. The first editions of each of the comics would even be published on the exact same day, despite either side knowing what the other were doing. But anyway, that's a whole other video for a whole other day. Shrek even paid homage to the French Angel in the first installment of the franchise, when he wrestled a scene in the squared circle, which would interestingly enough even have Ronda Rousey's walkout music Bad Reputation playing throughout the sequence. Me! Take me! Ah! 
thanks for watching this video, make sure to drop a like and comment, it really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, as well as subscribing to the channel if you haven't already.